The reading is taken from John, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. Early in the morning, Jesus came again to the temple, and the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. And making her stand before them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now the law of Moses commands us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the women standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. I have chosen to reflect on this passage from St John's Gospel, traditionally read every Ash Wednesday, to launch us in our Lent reflections, God's story, our story. You see, it is just one of many stories of interaction between God in Jesus and a human being, or in this case, several human beings. Who would you identify with in this story? The woman taken in adultery, publicly shamed and disgraced, or the men taken in hypocrisy, quick to judge her, and then cleverly challenged to recall their own numerous failings. Then there is the character of Jesus, bending wordlessly and writing with his finger in the sand, somewhat reminiscent of the finger of God in the book of Daniel, from which we get the expression, the writing is on the wall. We will never know what he wrote in the sand or drew, Perhaps that speaks of an element of mystery in our relationship with God, the unknowability of the infinite. The Bible is the overarching story of God's relationship with humanity, his desire from the very outset to share his creation, indeed to entrust his creation to the men and women he made in his image, the men and women he loves. And each of our stories of faith, like that of the woman, sit somewhere within this great narrative of love and mercy. Each of us has a story to tell of how we first encountered God, or why we came to seek him and follow him? Why is it that we are so slow to tell our story? I think perhaps it is because there is still so much mystery, so many answers we haven't worked out. What if someone asks us? What if we don't know the answer? As the writer of Ecclesiastes put it, you have set eternity in the hearts of man, yet he cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. We cannot see what is written in the sand. Should this really stop us? In the next chapter of John's Gospel, chapter 9, you can read about the man born blind whom Jesus healed. The Pharisees pursue him and ask him a barrage of questions because Jesus healed him on a Sabbath. 
Eventually, the man replies simply, Whether he is a sinner or no, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I see. The people who have shared their faith with me and to whom I am eternally grateful could not answer my deepest theological questions, but they shared the one thing they knew about the Lord they loved. Can you and I do the same? It says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the people who have helped us understand the good news of your love. Please bless them today. Help me to be willing and able to share what I know of your love with others through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Amen. i